So, when I start this scene, um, it loads these dummy clips. Uh, and let me click on the trigger one. So on the trigger track, I've got a instrument rack. Now the cool thing you can do on an instrument rack, this button chain right here, this guy, um, if you have chain selected, you can make different chains. So within your instrument rack, you can have, like say for the song Forever and Ever, when I select this chain, it loads this drum uh, drum rack. And within that drum rack, I have samples that are over here. So if you look over here, while I click over here, you'll see as I click through, this drum rack changes every time I select a different one. So when you click on this clip up here, right up here at the top, um, within this actual dummy clip you go to envelopes which is down here the little E and you select uh, instrument rack so you have to have an instrument rack on that track you select that and then under which type of envelope you want chain selector and then I set the envelope here to a number between zero and 128 so you can have up to oh and it goes to negative 128 so you can have whatever that is 256 uh, 256 different chains for any one track um, so like let's say which one was this shadows shadows is set to five that red line has been moved up to five because on your chain selector it's five because on the chain selector so here I've got it set to five. Now I could zoom out. Uh, well, this is only two bars long. But I could make this, like on the song, um, where is it? Let me find it. On Shine. This one for Shine, uh, see how it changes there at bar 50-something? When we get to this bar in Shine, I actually load a separate chain. So that way we're in the middle of the song. All my sounds change at bar 56 or whatever bar that is. Because um, I'm playing along and at some point I want hand claps to get added to the snare and the kick drum sound to change. So, Can I ask a question? Yes. Why didn't you just build a bigger kit that had another kick sound and another clap? Because it's the same trigger gotcha. on and the same snare trigger. Okay. It's like I don't want to have to hit a different So it's because of your hardware. It's because of my hardware that I do that. Because I'm just playing kick, snare, hat. I'm not playing like my SPDS right. or pads. I'm playing kick, snare, hat. And at the first half of the song, the snare sample, and it's blended. So like you hear my regular snare, but you also hear like this 808 clap sound. But it's only there for half the song. Um, so that's within this dummy clip. You can set what chain in that chain selector. Can you show the notes? Just to clarify that the you know the dummy clip doesn't have notes, right? No, there's no notes in the dummy. Well, yeah. Uh, where would that be? This. Yeah, there's no notes. There's no MIDI information other than just this envelope. The control notes. messages. But so on this song, it's like it looks like it's eight, and then it goes to nine. So on the instrument rack, if I scroll down to Shine, I have Shine one and Shine two. Shine one. This little guy here is set to 8, and this little guy here is set to 2, or to 9. So, when it gets to the... When I start the song, it loads this, and there's a clap, and a low click, and a clack. I don't know what a clack is, but it's obviously a sound. Is that the whoopee cushion app I saw? Uh, yes. Cool. That's a clack. That's a low kick. That's a clap. So that's my snare sample. So I think if I hit play, I have all these sounds loaded. You have to play them though, don't you? But if I jump past bar 50, um, there's 57. That's where it happened. I don't know. I, without my trigger finger, I don't know if I can really. 
You can uh, draw if you want to do that. Well, it's fine. That's the ba- basic gist of it. Um, <clears throat> so, anyway, so for each one of these chains, like, if say I wanted to make a new song. I want, we're going we're gonna to write a song, and I'm getting ready to go out on the road with it. I could just option drag forever and ever. Now I've duplicated that. Then I move this over, and let's just choose 48. So now that's chain 48. And I'll rename it New Song. And I'll go over here. So now on my drum rack, I don't want that sound. And I want this sound to be on those three pads. So now, if I go to Forever and Ever, it's just these two sounds. And when I do New Song, it's those two sounds. So then, I'll duplicate that. Um, so now this is my new song. I will rename that New Song, not the band. But I'd like those shoes. Um, so, what I would do here then, is I'm in, for this clip, for this little dummy MIDI clip, um, which I guess I should specify, this is a MIDI track, not an audio track. For this little dummy MIDI clip, I would want to get rid of this information. Well, that's weird. How do I get rid of that? Delete? Select over it. I did. Mm, like this. Yeah. Oh. Anyway. Now it's not move it? No, it's just... You have to delete the whole thing. Like that? Oh yeah, Apple all. Anyway, so let's make this... 48, you said? Yeah. Is there a way to trigger drum rack? Oh, I could use... Let me see if this works. Um, what notes are these? And how do you go down an octave? You know all this stuff. Mm. Or up an octave. Think. Are you in the right one? You just hit them. Yeah, Z and X. To go up and down? Yep. Is it both rows? Uh, yeah. I'm yeah, because that's C. Oh, I need to have this on input, don't I? Okay, it's getting input. You just need to know what the notes are now. You didn't put them in a traditional spot. Yeah. So G sharp. So A zero. W S and Y maybe? No, W S and H. Thank you. Okay, so that's that guy right there. So technically, if I play Shine, I'm not going to get anything because on Shine, there's no note there. Bottom. So now I'm playing that note and there's nothing there. But if I go to New Song, now loaded. And what I did too is I made blank dummy clips that have nothing. Um, well, actually, they load an empty drum rack so that it, oh, sorry, like when I get to a song that doesn't have any sounds, when I load that loop, it automatically turns all my sounds off.